Welcome back everyone to another Company of Heroes 2 replay cast, and this time it is going to be a 2v2 on Lierno. The replay is going to be sent in by Earth, who is going to be playing as the Brits spawning in the east with his ally Promete playing as the Soviets, already getting out a special rifle command. On the opposing side we're going to have Persian Immortal playing as the Wehrmacht, and for Rez, who's going to be spamming MGs playing as the Wehrmacht as well. No, I haven't. Ooh, double engineer. Haven't seen that in a long time. Something else that I haven't seen in a long time are the Brits. I <laughs> haven't played or seen the Brits in forever, so I'm probably going to be bad at casting them. But I'm gonna do my best. Already going out with his infantry sections. A couple of infantry sections always pretty good. I'm expecting a third one, yes, of course. Um, need to get that map control going, and of course, very useful in early engagements. For res. Uh, wait, what? Oh, that's where he built his infantry company. Right. Um, yeah, I didn't see it anywhere, so I'm like, he's spamming MGs, but no, it, it turns out he's actually uh, built it in a strange position to, I think, project over the north. So that's fine. Uh, he's going to have a little bit of a better way to do that. Also, it seems like the Germans are focusing more on the southern side of the map, except for this Grand Year squad. Earth is sending pretty much all of his forces to the north, whereas the... Um, the Germans seem to be sending all of their stuff to the center in the south. They have two MGs, um, two MG42s, of course, two Wehrmacht players allow you to do that, which means that they're going to have a pretty easy time holding on to some key territories in this uh, early game. So that shouldn't be too hard to at least hold on to one fuel point and perhaps um, two VPs. Engineer is already being forced to retreat from Promete, and he's gonna have his penal squad charge in and try to do something, but there isn't really going to be much that the allies can do in the center. There's two buildings that have already been occupied by the Germans. One, the barn, and the other, the house, in uh, the fuel point, so that's really not going to be a good fight for the allies to take. They're gonna be at a disadvantage, and they should probably just leave it be and go for the north side of the map. In the north side of the map, Irv has constructed one of those trenches, and he's going for a universal carrier, which means that later on he's also going to have a very mobile little light vehicle to help hold on to the big swaths of territory in the north. While his ally still kind of struggles in the south, there's a second penal squad coming out from Probate. Of course, penal spam, very, very strong if um, your opponent doesn't have a lot of MGs near houses. The problem with this is the fact that soon Promete is going to have a lot of uh, munitions for satchel charges, but until then, the Germans are pretty safe in their hold of the center and the south. Lierno is a map that has some uh, very, very uh, clear categories and splits in terms of territory types. There is the big forest in the south, the town in the center, and of course in the north you have the open field. So it is a map where you have to kind of be... Um, uh, aware of the fact that you're walking into several different kinds of territories, and here comes the Satchel Charge, of course. Germans reacting in time, and in fact, running out of the right door, doesn't get his uh, MG wiped. Very, very good play from 4Res, preventing a very um, potentially dangerous situation where he lost his MG really early on. There's another dangerous situation with these uh, Grenadiers, starting to take a lot of all the damage. And in fact, both of the Grand Ears really need to retreat as quickly as possible. One of them is going to go down. Very bad play, I think, for Persian Mortal. Here comes a uh, stun grenade. From what? I'm guessing this Grand Ear squad that was retreating. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Persian Mortal has gone for the Elite Troops Doctrine. So stun grenades are available. So, allies winning an engagement in the south, however, as you can see, the Germans in the north are advancing and capturing some territory. There is a Universal Carrier trying to repeal that and um, it's gonna do pretty well at that but unfortunately it's running in way too much that was actually due to I think the um, ah. I thought it was due to a rally point but it turns out the rally points only over there it was walking them further so that was a bit of a mistake both sides making a couple of mistakes with their early game units starting to lose some of them uh, in all of this the Soviets have managed to uh, essentially force back the Germans from the barn, except the Germans have taken up some more positions in other areas of the town, and right now the Soviets are kind of lacking in terms of squads that can actually do something about it, because as you can see, a lot of their forces are uh, very, very low on uh, health. There's uh, the penal at half health, the engineer at less than half, etc. Et so whenever they get into a fight, they're going to start dropping like flies really, really quickly. 
as you can see, here comes a grenade. Oh, that's very, very bad. The Strafbot really needs to retreat. And I'm pretty sure that this Grandeur Squad, if he uh, actually gets out, which he does, might be able to chase him down. Very good retreat path uh, selection by the two uh, Penals. Not actually going in the negative cover, but only going near defense, thus giving them a light cover and preventing them from being killed. Prometea very smartly has gone for a uh, field infirmary, which means that he's going to be able to heal up his troops quite easily, uh, preventing his uh, troops from actually getting destroyed uh, that easily in the action. There is a sniper on the field for 4 res. Pretty interesting choice, uh, especially in the north. It has allowed him to um, essentially pick off a lot of Soviet troops, and, or actually uh, British troops even better, and force them to retreat. Even better because uh, the British, of course, have only four men in their units, whereas the Soviets have six. So, pretty good uh, little um, advantage for the Germans, having that sniper that can take out 25% of a unit in one hit. Persian Immortal has gone for some stormtroopers from his elite troops. This has, of course, alerted the allies that there is elite troops on the field. We'll see how the allies respond to that. Promete has uh, picked the Shock Army. Shock Army, of course, very, very strong for the uh, close range infantry support. I'm thinking he's trying to use his penals as a early game backbone and then trying to transition into maybe shock troops or maybe uh, conscripts with papashas while his penals get turned into PTRS light and vehicles. And ooh, there's some mines being placed by Persian Immortal. Very good uh, placement of the mines in the south. It's gonna allow him to keep some of that munitions uh, in his control. Of course, it's cut off, so he's not gonna actually get the income, but it's gonna deny it to the allies. In the meantime, the uh, the Germans still basically control all of the center and uh, most of the north. So the Allies are in a really bad position. They absolutely need to do something to um, get some territory under their belt. And ooh, some AT rifles coming in from Earth. Special weapons regiment. Of course, um, AT rifles okay against light vehicles, but the Germans so far don't really seem to be um, up for that really a lot. Uh, Four Res does have that. Um, Lash Mechanized Company, so he has the ability to go for some 2-2-2s or even a flame for a half track, but he hasn't done that, and considering his fuel reserves, I'm not thinking that he's going for any of that stuff right now. He's going for probably some later tier vehicles. Persian Immortal, I am guessing, is going to go for some um, tier 3 play, considering that he has the Tiger Race. Maybe he doesn't want to spend too many resources on teching up, but his friend uh, his friend has the Tiger, so maybe that applies to him too, but considering how much fuel he's saving, he might be going for a tier 4. He's also not gone for any phase upgrades yet, which is interesting, because the uh, the Axis have a resource advantage, but they're not really using it. Uh, whereas the Allies, I'm guessing, are going to be starting to tech up really, really soon. Earth has uh, the platoon command post, and he has upgraded the AC. Interesting choice, because he hasn't built an AC. I think it was... A bit of a panic when he realized he didn't really have a lot of AT, so he went for the um, Tank Hunter Infantry section plus the AC just to, I don't know, um, be sure that any any German vehicles didn't really uh, end the game right then and there. I don't know, uh, interesting little choice, could have been better. Uh, right now, a 120mm mortar is going to be very useful for Promete, um, especially to root out Germans in the buildings, which so far there aren't really many, there's only one MG so far. And, well, uh, it's also going to be useful against any troops that are trying to fight in the south. So, 120, expecting to get a few kills, I'm, hope I'm thinking, from Promete. And the infantry sections are also forced to retreat in the north, so the Germans keep control of that. Except, very nicely, Earth went for um, an MG. So, Becker's machine gun being placed in a trench in the north fuel point. Okay, so he faces uh, south, which is something that I was kind of going to talk about the MG wasn't really facing in the correct direction, but he notices it. Uh, there still might be a flank coming in from the west, but the MG is going to be able to essentially uh, keep itself um, keep itself sort of rooted in and uh, keep control of the fuel for Earth for a while. Uh, of course, uh, I would have placed the MG for something more like back here to keep it um, a little bit more safe from flanks. But, A, uh, things happen, and uh, measures have to be taken. Okay, MG is also being brought up to actually support in the center, or actually the push in the north for Earth, which is a good decision in my opinion. 
A resupply half track would be an interesting choice right now from Earth. Uh, I feel like he could uh, use that because think about it, he's facing a sniper, so having something to reinforce on the front line might just be a very good um, unit for him because he could just power through the sniper's bullets and uh, not really care, reinforce and push up and force the sniper to retreat. Plus, it would allow him the ability to upgrade his infantry without, of course, um, spending the fuel on the research weapon racks. There goes a Grenadier squad from those Penal Battalion. Of course, this is where the Penals really shine with their uh, superior damage and um, damage output, and of course, you know, uh, utility against enemy infantry, as opposed to cost whips. Later on, if the Germans really start going for vehicles, the fact that the Penals lack AT grenades, that's gonna start to uh, be sort of felt for the Soviets, as they lack vehicle snares right now. But the Germans really aren't going for any vehicles. Um, Treasure de Moro is going for finally a Panzer IV. And he's going to be able to use that fairly well in the north, but there is an AT gun coming in from Earth. And there goes 4 res. He's not really happy about what is happening. Looks like he's been losing some squads. And that's something that you kind of want to avoid when you're already winning the game. Uh, trying to f sort of push a little bit too hard and throwing the game, losing a lot of squads. Giving the advantage to your opponent is not something that you want to do. And right now, low, the Panzer IV is going south. That's not a good decision. Uh, it's not a good decision because, well, uh, the south is like not really good tank territory. There's a, as you can see, the forest, the town. The tanks are forced into very narrow paths, and um, any little mine. Okay, I'm expecting the T T7 to actually get cancelled from Comte and uh, Su-76 to be purchased. I don't think this T-70 is a very good idea. Oh, of course, right. Um, the Pino Battalion does have that coming in such a charge. I always forget. Uh, so at least there's a damaged engine for the Panzer IV. But, yeah, again, as you can see, going in to a territory where you don't really have line of sight over, um, over a lot of obstacles and you can get your tank sort of ambushed by enemy infantry, not really the best thing. Panzer IV might be able to survive. I mean, the AT gun from Earth very nicely is pushed down south. Now that he sees that the Panzer IV is there, he pushed down the AT gun. And the AT gun should be able to at least force back the P4, but looks like the AT gun will get... Oh no, okay. Flank for coming in from the Penals. Very good. And the T-70 is still purchased by Promete. I think this is a mistake. Also, what is 4Res doing with his fuel? Pretty much nothing. I'm thinking this is a big mistake. Uh, he has gone for the tier 3, which is interesting. He hasn't really bought anything out of it, though. Really, really weird play from 4Res. I would have expected him to go for something at this point uh, to actually uh, help him out. Who knows, maybe some Stugs to prevent any allied armor from coming out. But maybe an Ostwind or a Panzer IV. I don't know, if you're going for tier 3, you need to get tier 3 units. Otherwise, it's just a waste of fuel for the Wehrmacht because... You don't need tier 3 to go to tier 4, you don't need tier 3 to get to Tiger. So, when you have a resource advantage, you might as well go for the late game. And here comes another Satcher Charge attempt from Promete. Uh, funnily enough, the smoke from the Panzer IV medium tank actually helping out the Penals uh, because it blocks out fire from the Stormtroopers. And the Penal might go down. No, sides to retreat, and T-70, there's absolutely nothing that it can do against the Panzer IV. Look, if this was a T-76, um, the Panzer IV would have gone down really, really easily. So, I don't know. I'm not really enjoying that T-70 purchase. Of course, it's going to be very useful against enemy infantry, and it's probably going to get a few kills. But at this point in the game, considering that Promete had uh, a 120mm mortar, and had the capability uh, to go for some shock troops, I don't think he really needed the extra anti-infantry. Shock troops in the south of the map, um, we are now, are really, really strong, of course, because of the uh, low line of sight. Can't really uh, shoot them down from far away if um, they're coming out of the trees, etc., etc. You know it better than me. In the meantime, some engineers are trying to repair that Panzer IV, which is a pretty decent choice, except... Uh, really, the Germans are lacking in repairability. Uh, they only have two engineer squads between them, and they have gone for two Panzer IVs. Four res has a hundred fuel to spare, and he has gone for a Panzer IV. Yeah, I still think he should have gotten for a tier four, and maybe he'll go for a Brumbeer. The Brumbeer would be very, very nice in this situation. 
or maybe even a Panther, just to counter in uh, advance any allied armor. Anti-tank on goes down from uh, Persian Immortals Infantry. This is the kind of danger from... Um, ooh. This is the kind of danger from sending your units, especially support weapons, to support your allies. And these units are definitely going to go down. Both of the squads being wiped out... Well, I'm thinking... Come on. Yeah, okay. Both of the squads being wiped out by uh, the Pino, plus the other Pino, plus the infantry sections in the center. Yeah, I was about to say, oh, here comes a Satchel Charge actually near the Grenadiers and kills one of them, and there's an infantry section there, so all of the Grenadiers and uh, Stormtroopers from Persian Immortal going down. He has enough manpower to replace them. He had 900. He placed 340? No, 350 of that manpower into one Panzer IV. But still, uh, that was a very, very nasty blow to Pe Persian Immortal's sort of um, hopes, because... He had those nicely veteraned up infantry squads, and now he's going to have to rebuild them from scratch with no veterancy, which is, of course, uh, very, very risky because he's spending a lot of manpower and possibly a lot of munitions on units that aren't going to have a lot of uh, good performances without the veterancy. Interesting choice from Earth. Still not going for that resupply half rack or the um, research weapon racks, despite the fact that he has 230 munitions. Uh, so I'm thinking that he's trying to save up for the Concentrated Fire. But the Concentrated Fire against Wehrmacht really isn't all that good. I'm thinking that this is much, much better against uh, OKW to destroy the trucks. So I'm not really sure what he's trying to achieve with his 250 munitions float. He has been able to steal one Panzerfreck on an infantry section from those Panzergrenadiers, or no, not the Panzergrenadiers, the Stormtroopers. I mean, they're basically the same unit. Uh, they went down in the center. But he has five infantry sections. One of them with Panzer Shrek, two of them are tank hunter infantry sections, so he has those uh, heat grenades. Is that a tank hunter too? No, that is just a normal infantry section. So he's really going heavy on that infantry, and I'm thinking that that's kind of a mistake. He wants a little bit more in terms of vehicles, uh, because... He's going to really start to run out of manpower soon enough from reinforcing all those infantry squads. Even right now, look, he has to replace four um, members of infantry sections. That is like 80 plus, um, 80 plus 36, so that's like 120 manpower already. And there goes another infantry squad from the Germans. Yep, wiped out by the penals. This is really the main weakness right now of the Germans. They're going for... A strategy that's kind of interesting because they're going for a lot of medium tanks while waiting for Tigers. But you can't really do that if you're losing tons and tons of infantry. They're constantly, constantly losing infantry squads. That's led to them losing the excellent map control that they had earlier. And right now the Allies have a bit of a shot at retaking some of crucial, uh, the crucial points in the north. Especially this fuel point and some of the VPs preventing them from being triple capped and preventing them from losing out a bit too early in the game while they wait for some of their better units like the Firefly and possibly for Prometheus some Katyushas later on. He has gone for that tier 4, so Mechanized Armor Campania, going for a T-34-76. T-34-76 could be nice in the environment of the south because it's kind of expendable, so if you just lose it to a random mine, it's not really as bad as you, you lose something else. And because the Germans are less likely to send their own tanks down south, the T-34-76 can kind of shine without having to uh, worry too much about German vehicles. While the Firefly deals with the German vehicles, so that's what Earth was actually saving up the munitions for, the Tulip Rockets. Interesting little choice, of course, Tulip Rockets are very, very strong. Um, Firefly in general is very strong, but the problem is it's got a very, very long reload time on that gun, and the armor is really, really subpar. It runes into an AT gun, there's three Panzer IVs that swarm around it and destroy it. That is exactly what the Germans needed to do to uh, counter the Sherman Firefly. Trying to lure it forward with one of the Panzer IVs. Let the Firefly be a little bit overconfident. I'm thinking that the Germans are making a mistake though in this attack. With these three Panzer IVs against all of this um, uh, British infantry that can actually do a lot in terms of anti-armor. There's two boys AT rifles uh, that also have of course the heat grenades. Then there's a Panzer Trek. Still, um, thanks to the support of this machine gun, all of the British infantry is sent packing. Now, there's also an MG uh, for the Brits, 
killing the stolen AT gun and also doing quite a bit of damage against the sniper. Right now, T3476 tries to charge in and repel the Panzer IV, which it does, but the Panzer IV is going to be able to escape without really much damage taken. Here comes the T70 also. T70, of course, not really going to be that useful against the Panzer IV, but it could target the pioneers that are repairing this Panzer IV to try to wipe them out. Uh, it looks like it's targeting the Panzer IV. Along with the support of the T3476, might be able to wipe out both of them. If the T3476 was actually uh, chasing down both of these vehicles, it would be able to destroy both of them. T70, uh, of course, bouncing off the frontal armor of that Panzer IV, but here comes the fire from the T3476. It's definitely making a mistake. What Promete is doing is he's right-clicking on the Panzer IV, which means that the T3476 sort of moves up, stops to aim and fire. Uh, which sometimes allows the Panzer IV to get out of the line of sight. There goes also a fuel cache that the Germans have built. So very, very good engagement overall for the Allies. As I expected, that was absolutely an overextension from the Panzer IVs. And the fourth Panzer IV wasn't really doing anything in that fight. And uh, that's kind of a big, big problem. So the fifth Panzer IV, which was Persian Immortals, Third went down, then both of the uh, Panzer IVs from Forez went down. That was an absolutely ridiculous fuel investment for the Germans going down. I am thinking it's something along the lines of like it's 130, no, 125 for one Panzer IV. So three of them is 75 plus 300, um, so 375 fuel going down the drain. Absolutely not what the Germans were planning for, absolutely, really, uh, only one Firefly for Earth. And there goes an infantry squad, which is actually a blessing in disguise. He has way too many infantry squads. Earth is really starving himself out of manpower right now by building all of these squads and also blobbing them up like that against Panzer IVs. Not really the best thing possible. In fact, here comes a very nasty uh, shot from the Panzer IVs. Panzer IVs actually um, overextend once again. Try to go in for a crush, which they shouldn't really have done because the, the infantry uh, were near a, a sort of bend in the line of sight. There was, of course, the line of sight blocking of these buildings. So that allows the uh, T-3476 and the T-70 to sneak up undetected. Very lucky that he does not lose that one Panzer IV. Of course, again, blessing in the skies. Earth had way too many infantry squads, so losing some of them is actually good because he's kind of restructuring his forces. <laughs> uh, losing them is going to um, prevent too much manpower bleed from coming in. And here comes the penals. I'm thinking that some satchel charges are going to be thrown down, but it looks like Promete wasn't really looking at the um, wasn't really looking at the um, area. What is this Stug doing? I think he's trying to chase down the C-3476 that was uh, damaged earlier, but that was definitely a big mistake. Here comes a heat grenade from the tank hunters, plus with the support of the Ordnance Expounder, which was stolen by the Soviets. Of course, very very nicely takes out the Stug. Um, and the six-pounder being stolen by the Soviets is actually really nice because, of course, the six-man crew is going to be a little bit more effective than the um, British four-man crew, while keeping all of its veterancy, normal veterancy abilities, and also um, the rapid maneuvers, which allows it to reposition faster. Very close to taking out that veterancy two Panther four from those penals. T-3476 is going to try to assist. I would have gone for a Su-85 if I was Prometheus because. I would have noticed that I was lacking in terms of heavy AT. Um, of course, going for a new T-3476 isn't actually a bad move anyway, because the Soviets and the Brits know that there's been a lot of Panzer IV spamming and a lot of Stug spamming coming in from the Germans. They've absolutely squandered all of their uh, original fuel advantage. So what the Soviet player really is doing is he's taking note of that and saying, well, I don't need a Su-85. I might as well just go for a T another T-3476, maybe let my um, British teammate go for a Firefly, maybe let him go for a Churchill Crocodile to get a heavy tank out, and uh, let him deal with the heavy AT, I'm just going to go with the anti-infantry and anti-medium vehicle. Of course, eventually the Germans are going to have the Tiger and the Tiger Ace, but by that point it's just going to be so late that um, the Soviets really aren't going to have a lot of trouble countering that because of course they're also destroying all of the German infantry squads. The Germans are down to zero mainline infantry in Forez's army and two but without any veterancy for Persian Immortal. So right now that has allowed the Allies, as you can see from the map, to capture most of the points that really matter which is in the north uh, east and northwest of course, uh, north in general of the map. 
in the south you have two fu uh, munitions points and one VP. Which eventually I'm thinking that um, the Soviet player is going to be trying to capture, especially with his engineers. They're also starting to plant in some demo charges, which is a really good decision because um, demo charges, of course, allow you to wipe out enemy squads instantly. And because Promete hasn't really gone for any demo charges yet, that is going to be um, a bit of a surprise move. There's going to be a surprise effect that the Germans aren't really going to be expecting demo charges this late in the game. Here comes a bit of a smoke from the Panzer IV, a very nice push from the T-3476 is kind of not going to bear fruit because the T-3476 really don't have... Oh! Concentrated fire operation takes out the pack gun, very very nice. Also the Panzer IV goes down to the chase of the T-3476s, T-3476s really should not be surviving this. In fact there is a Tiger Ace, but the Tiger Ace isn't really going to be able to chase down T-34s if the T-34s escape at maximum speed, which they should be doing right now. Their advantage right now is that they're in the base, so the base buildings are essentially going to be a shot blocker, but they're really staying there instead of escaping, which they should have been doing this entire time. Yes, one of them may have gotten Panzerfausted, but well, one of them at least, I think, should have been able to escape out of that. Which right now, I am thinking that, uh, ooh, this T-34 might escape. No, it gets shot by the Tiger. Very, very nice for the Germans, but still, uh, the Germans lost a veteran C2 Panzer IV. In fact, they lost a second Panzer IV as well up here. Uh, not really sure when here. And, um, of course, two Panzer IVs for two T-34 76s is not a good trade at all for the Germans, especially in a situation where they have the Tiger Ace, because the Tiger Ace costs uh, not a lot of fuel, zero fuel, but indirectly it costs a crap ton of fuel. Because it reduces your fuel income by uh, basically 90%, which is, uh, of course, crippling. And now the Germans have absolutely no fuel income uh, for Persian Nomoro. And right now, what the Soviets are doing is really, really well geared towards um, stopping the Tiger Ace. What you want to do with the Tiger Ace is that you do... Well, of course you want to kill it. Um, but you don't really want to kill it too quickly, because it has that resource penalty towards the allies um, with the 90% and the 25% manpower income reduction. You want the Tiger Ace to be alive and useless, so you want to snare it. You want it to hit mines, you want it to hit your um, AT grenades and satchel charges and the likes. You want it to be essentially constantly in repair and I'm thinking that that squad, oh, very lucky to escape with its life. because. If it's just staying there and not really doing anything, it's just wasting more and more resources. So that eventually you can just go ahead and kill it when you can. But you never really want to overextend for the Tiger Ace. That's really the main thing. Um, because the Tiger Ace sometimes uh, is a nice, really nice bait for the Germans. They just place it there and the enemies think, Oh, I need to kill the Tiger Ace because you can never, uh, of course, replace it. It's only one. But that sometimes is a very nice way for the Germans to lure the allies into traps. Of course right now the Germans really don't have a lot to lure the allies into because as you can see they're kind of out of units. Right now there goes the uh, Stug. I'm not really quite sure why the Stug was trying to chase once again the T-3476s. That's absolutely not what you want to do with Stugs. Stugs are defensive units. You don't want to chase down enemy vehicles. So overall I'm thinking, I'm, all, I'm, I'm gonna be calling it, I think the allies are gonna win. Because I don't really see how the Germans can uh, turn this around. I mean, the Allies have balanced armies that uh, can essentially perform a lot of tasks. Even if the Germans get a few nice small victories like the destruction of this T30, or T-70. They had to expend a lot of resources to do that. They had to bring in the Ostwin and take a lot of damage. They had to use the Stuka close air support with the 200 munitions expenditure from 4 res, which he's not going to be able to do again in quite a long time. Of course, the Ostwin is really going to be the only vehicle that he's going to have for a long, long, long time because he has the Tiger Ace on the field. So he has the Tiger Ace's fuel penalty. And yeah, the Allies just have a bit of a better all-around force. Here comes yet another Satchel Charge attempt. I'm not sure why he didn't go for a Satchel Charge there. He could have just thrown one onto the Tiger Ace. But here comes the Heat Grenade from Earth. Very nice. He has gone for the uh, Squad Size Upgrade. And still no reason for weapon racks because he's gone for a second Firefly, which still hasn't been upgraded with some uh, tulip rockets because he doesn't need to. Let's 
Oh, Tiger Ace might be going down. I mean, at this point, you might as well just kill it. You might as well just kill it, and the T-34-7 senses, I think, I'm trying to do just that. Still, um, Paramate is still making that mistake of right-clicking onto enemy vehicles. With the T-34s, you don't want to be right-clicking onto enemy vehicles. You want to be clicking onto a position where you can get close to the enemy, because the T-34-7-6s at maximum range are really, really pr prone to missing and really, really prone to not penetrating their opponents. So what you want to do is, you don't want to be constantly edging up and down the maximum range. Because that just kind of uh, doesn't really do a lot for you. The enemies just are able to escape back outside of the line of sight. What you want to do is you want to click onto a good position for the T-34 to fire onto an enemy. And then maybe uh, click on the enemy unit just to make sure that the T-34 is firing on the correct target. In the meantime, the Allies did have a bit of a foothold in the south. But the Germans have been able to send some extra forces down there to capture some areas. Of course, the real problem is that Promete has lost some of his infantry, so he really doesn't have a lot of forces that can counter this. Uh, right now he's sending the shock troops, and I'm thinking that the shock troops are going to go to clean house here, unless they charge right into the MG's heart fire. They could just try to use a smoke grenade there and uh, capture the point and try to flank the MG. What they really need to do is they need to send some harassment down to the south, because right now they need that triple cap to seal the deal against the Germans. The Germans have lost their Tiger Ace, they have lost all of their units from Torres, they need to be uh, sort of stomped down as quickly as possible. They don't really want to let the Germans recover. Of course, it's going to be very, very hard for the Germans to recover from this situation either way, but still, um, it wouldn't be too bad to get the uh, Germans to be completely destroyed. T-3476 nicely, along with the 120mm mortar, takes out EMG, and there's just a lot of German infantry trying to do something. Pack being brought up along with the Ostwind. Of course, a decent combination, but in the center, it's really, really nice uh, because you can just flank the pack easily. Uh, here comes a bit of a uh, counter push from the Allies, of course. There comes the flank from the Allied vehicles from both sides. Pack has to retreat because, of course, it doesn't want to get the flank, and that allows the Allied vehicles to just push through. Pack can't really do much because there aren't any mines. Despite the fact that the Germans have 120 munitions and 80 munitions each, they could have gone for some tellers in the areas of the south of the map. The Allies finally planting down some mines of their own. And of course, there's a couple of packs, but the packs do manage to destroy the mine from the um, Royal Engineers. Very nice, but at the same time, that's not really enough because the Allies have an absolutely iron grip over the north and center of the map, and there isn't really much that the Germans can do about it. There's still the swarm of T-3476s. Promete is just going for T-3476 after T-3476. And eventually, 4-Res is gonna be um, going for a Tiger. That's what I'm thinking the Germans are waiting for instead of just surrendering. But really, with, with all the T-3476s on the field, with the Sherman Firefly on the field, there isn't really much that even the Tiger is gonna be able to do, because it's gonna be alone against all those allied vehicles. Finally, the Allies go for the south and they capture all of the points, and this is, I think, just the end for the Germans. There's really nothing that they, they can do. Uh, they should have been able to uh, sort of push back against the Allies earlier. They went for way, way too many tier 3 units and then used them correctly. They lost their infantry at a crucial point in the game where they needed their backbone of veteran troops. And that just kind of allowed the Allies to rebuild, recover... Um, while earlier on they had some problems with the map control, they were able to, of course, preserve their units, win for that, because they just had better units, as opposed to a bigger quantity of them, through veterancy. And then they managed to, of course, uh, push back in a coordinated manner, with Promete going for a lot of medium vehicles, and Earth going for the big um, sort of anti-tank and the big infantry backbone. And then, of course, uh, once the Germans lost their uh, big uh, sort of medium armor swarm, that was pretty much just the end. Right now, here comes the crocodile. It's going to be able to absolutely counter those two pack guns. Very good. And there goes the tiger. As I said, it's just one vehicle. Can't really do too much while it is very, very strong. Well, and it's completely surrounded, really not a lot that it can, in fact, accomplish. And that's going to be the end of the game. So yeah, I pretty much made my thoughts clear on the game. Tell me in the comments below what you think.
Hmm, interesting. So I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the Company Truce to Replay cast. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you soon.